Scientists David Moore and Peter Marshall are on their first visit to Lim High School in Cheshire. They're here to teach a group of BTEC pharmacy students. It was quite daunting at first, but I'm very glad that we've actually been able to pull this together. Yes, I actually have a, a son at the school, so I, I was interested in the opportunity to, if you like, give something back. Um, there are a number of, in the engineering side, there are a number of opportunities to do this sort of activity. Um, and I've, in a sense, been looking for the opportunity to do this with the local school. Uh, having said that, like uh, David, when I realised what I was getting into, it is actually quite daunting. <laughs> Good afternoon everybody, um, as I said last lesson, today we're going to be starting the pharmacy unit of the BTEC Health course. We're really lucky... David and Peter are going to be taking over Dr Annie Abbott's one hour year 12 class. ...pharmaceutical company, and today we've invited um, Mr Moores and Mr Marshall, and they're going to give um, an introduction to drug design, drug formulation, and you guys need this for your first couple of assignments. Okay, so take any notes that you need ask any questions that you think are relevant and enjoy this afternoon. Thank you. Earlier in the week, David and Peter met up with Annie and fellow teacher John Woodward to get some crucial advice. Yeah, definitely. I think a visual aid would be fantastic. Okay. And, well, and also the props are always, I think, excellent. Yeah. If we can put some of that in, I think that would be really, really valuable. Do you think we should take questions through the presentation? Classically, when we do presentations, we stand up, we do a talk and we take questions at the end. But is that going to work here, or do you really need to be more interaction? I think it would be better um, as the, as they come up rather mm. than waiting till the end. Um, students like to feel um, valued, and if mm. they if they're making a contribution during what you're saying, mm. then then that will help them be more involved in what's going on, and it'll be more relevant to them. They may, they'll probably forget. Sure. If a child asks you a question, um, don't just answer that one child that's asked the question that's it's very easy to do um, but then you're excluding everybody else that's in right. the room and maybe some some other uh, kids will want to contribute something to your answer that's mm. always good when That'd that happens good, yes. um, make eye contact with with all of them at some point sure. during during your talking so that they feel included um, try not to turn your back when you when you're speaking but the way the room's set up hopefully Mm. Uh, that wouldn't be a problem. The, the teachers in the pre-meeting were, were very helpful. They gave us some very positive and strong feedback on, on our presentation, um, particularly on the area of interaction with the pupils. I think probably if we hadn't had that pre-meeting, we'd have just run through our presentation and perhaps taken questions at the end, that kind of thing. But they've encouraged us quite strongly to interact um, with the pupils as we go through the presentation. So. We'll try that today and see how it works. I think the other thing is, is um, when you're working in a technical area all the time, you tend to pick up an awful lot of jargon True. Uh, and acronyms. And we use them all the time, and we, it becomes subconscious. And I think they flagged up a large number <laughs> of things we had to change the wording, because otherwise we'd spend all our time explaining it. Now, I really like um, showing data. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think the kids see enough of it. I think lots of people are frightened of, of showing them graphs, and it's it's really really important in science that they can interpret a graph. Right. So, so th that's really good with your different tablet tablet or, or injection, um, as long as you go through what's on each axis and sure. you follow through. Sure, and what it means. Um, the because I think the it effect. really yeah, it yeah. really shows the effect. It shows I the think different really bioavailability, well. yeah. different yes. absorption. Mm. And even when you've got more drug you've got far less of it in your, yeah. in your body. Yeah. To me, that, that's very important. It explains important. why you wouldn't yeah. use a tablet every yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. OK. Annie and John are going to monitor their performance. It's five past twelve, and David's on first. Good afternoon, everybody. My name's David Moore, as Dr Abbott has just said. Um, I'm delighted to be here at Lim High School to talk to the BTEC pharmacy course. Does any, anybody have any idea how much we, we would spend on a, let's say, per day basis? to research and develop new medicines. Any thoughts? Give me a guess. A lot. A lot. Millions. What? Millions. Millions. It's millions. It's sixteen million dollars every day we spend on research and development into new medicines. Just a few minutes in and David's got straight into the swing of asking the students questions. So, but why might we not be able to use medicines from natural sources? Any thoughts? Any ideas? They might run out. 
spot on. We might run out. That's absolutely one of the key reasons. It's not the only reason, but it's one of the key reasons. So David's also taken on the advice and relates his work to everyday examples. So in terms of discovery of new medicines today, what we do is we actually synthesize them. We make them. And it's a bit like cooking. We use things that look a bit like recipes to convert simple starting materials into more complicated drug molecules. And you may have seen or even used or heard of benzene. It can be drawn either like that or like that. And that is a starting material, as you can see there, for aspirin.